Hello everyone, this is Mr. Undercoffler, and today we're going to be looking at the guide of notes called Unit Rates, and I'm actually going to break this up into um, two or three different videos. This is going to be starting the very first page. Go ahead and follow along with me here as I read this out loud. Rate is a ratio that compares different types of measurements. A unit rate is a rate where the second part of the ratio is one of something. You'll see what I mean here when we look at some examples. When it's written as a fraction, the denominator, which is the bottom of the fraction, is the one. All right, so some examples here, and I try to come up with some very common real life examples that you might hear about um, in the world. Uh, I separated this into three different columns. We have writing the ratio with a one. We have using the very common word that we hear in real life called per, and then we have the fraction form. So let's talk about a very common unit rate. Speed, how fast you drive, 55 miles in one hour. That's a unit rate because the second part is one. But I could also say 55 miles per hour, which is probably the most common way we hear it in real life. In fraction form, that's 55 miles over one hour. Here's some more examples, $600 during one week. That would be $600 per week. In fraction form, $600 over one week. 295 for one pound. Again, all of these are unit rates because it's the idea of being for one of something. Now, this one's a unit price because it's the price per something. I could also use the word per, 295 per pound, 295 over one pound. All right, now, how are you going to be able to find a unit rate? Well, you're actually going to end up dividing. The order you divide matters. So let's do some review here. And maybe for some of you, this isn't a review. Um, if I have 24 feet over six seconds, the fraction bar, and we've talked about this before, the fraction bar means division. But the number that is on top is first, and the number that's on bottom in the denominator is second. Now, in your calculator, you would not actually do FT for feet or SEC for seconds, you would just do 24 divided by six. So that's what this fraction means, 24 feet divided by six seconds. So in your calculator, actually on this one, you would do it in your head, 24 divided by six is four. Now notice the feet on the top is the first unit of measure. The seconds in the denominator is the second part of the unit of measure. And we can put the word per in between. So four feet per second. Here's another example. Let's say we have 10 centimeters over, which means divided by 40 minutes. So again, the fraction bar just is an interesting way of showing division. In your calculator, you'll do 10 divided by 40. Now I know some of you are like, oh, I can do that in my head. It's four. Nope, nope, no, no it's not. If the 40 was on the left and in the top of the numerator, then 40 divided by 10 would be four. But when you change the order of division, you get a different answer. So when the 10 is on top, which makes it first, and then you divide by a bigger number, in this example, 40, then you are going to get a decimal, 0. Point something. If you don't believe me, you can do this in your calculator right now. You'll get 0. 0.25. Since the centimeters was on top, that is the first part of the unit of measure. And since the minutes are in the denominator on bottom, that's the second part that goes after the word per. So 0.25 centimeters per minute. So you can start making some conclusions here. Numerator over denominator in your calculator, you'll do the numerator's number divided by the denominator in that order. Remember what I said, the order that you divide does matter. And also we can talk about units of measures. Whatever is the top unit will be your first unit in your answer. Whatever is the bottom unit will be the second unit that comes to the right of the word per when you're writing out your unit rate. Since I have just taught you that, we're going to put this to use. Follow along with me. To find a unit rate that you will divide, but the order matters. We already said this. It's all about the correct order of the units of measure. Ah. Many problems will tell you in its words the specific order of the unit rate that they want you to find. All right, taking what you have learned from these conclusions that we made, there's even two examples to look up here. I want to see if you can read number one and number two and figure out for yourself which way do you think is correct? Which way 
actually answers what the question wants you to find. Hit pause on the video. Let's see if you can figure out which one you're going to circle, which one you're going to cross out for number one and for number two. And then once you have made your decision, go ahead and hit play to see how you did. All right, did you already do number one or number two on your own? If not, please hit pause now. Even if you're not sure, try to take the order from the, the wording in the sentence and see if you can figure out which order is correct based on what we've talked about from the order mattering for your answer. All right, here we go. Number one, it wants you to find the average inches per hour. Now, remember what we talked about. Whatever is to the right of the word per, that comes from the denominator. That's the bottom unit. So you can go ahead and pencil in your hand, write this down. Per hour means hours has to be your denominator. So we are looking for, oh, well, it's the first one, isn't it? This is the one that actually puts, puts the hours in the denominator. So that way you'll get inches per hour. And you can see I already have the answer here underneath. 10 divided by 32 in your calculator would be 0.3125. Inches is on top, so that's first. Hours is on bottom, so that's to the right of the per. And there you go. This is the one you should go ahead and cross out. And there's number one. How about number two? 80 plastic cups cost $7.20. What is the cost for one cup? Now, remember how we said up to the top of our notes how we can write unit rates with using a one in the phrase, or we could use the word per. Well, problem number two is actually using the one in the actual wording of the question. What I want you to know is that if it ever says for one cup, that's the same as saying per cup. So pencils in your hand, write this down. That's why the cups should be your denominator. So that way it's per cup, not per dollar. Well, which one does that? It's not this one. This one is putting the dollars in the denominator, and that would give us cups per dollar. Well, that's not what the problem wants. It wants the cost per cup, not the cups per dollar. So here we go. This is the one that you should be circling because this one puts dollars up top, and that's why the dollars are first, cups on the bottom, and that's why cup comes to the right of the word per. All right, now that we've done number one and two and gone over them, let's see if you can actually do the work totally on your own for number three and number four. So no longer am I giving you two options and you have to pick which one is right. I want you to try three and four on your own. But before you do, don't hit pause yet. I want to clarify right now. The wrong way of doing it is just setting up your fractions with no units of measure at all. Because I got news for you. If you do not put your units of measure in your fractions, how are you going to know if you are actually finding the correct order based on the wording of the problem? Because it's not about which number's bigger, which number's smaller. No, 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 no. It's about what does the problem want in, in, in regards to the units of measure. So for example, number three, I read it out loud to you. Sam earned $76 for eight hours of work. Find his pay rate, which means how much he earned per hour. They want you to find out how much he earned money per hour. That's the order we need. So you're not going to know the correct order if you don't put the units of measure. So please do not do that. All right, try number three. You can put your work here on the right and then divide in your calculator, get your answer. And then also try number four, again, putting your work on the right, your fraction that you're setting it up, and your answer that you get from dividing in your calculator. Hit pause, try three and four right now, and then hit play when you're ready to see how you did. All right, have you already done three and four? If not, you got to hit pause. You have to do some independent practice. Even if you're not 100% sure, take what you've learned, use it to try these problems. All right, I'm assuming you already did three and four. Let's see how you did. Since we want the money earned per hour, I need to put the money up on the top and the hours on the bottom. That way I'll get the earnings per hour. In my calculator, I will divide. And if you divide this in your calculator, you will get 9.5. Now, I need a zero to the right. Why? Because with dollars and cents, we always had two digits to, for the, after the decimal point. All right. Let's make sure you have your units of measure in the correct order. Since the dollars was on top, that is first. 
And for whatever reason in America, we put the dollars to the left of the number instead of the right. I know that's kind of weird, but that's just the way it is. And then since the hours are in the denominator, that should be to the right of the word per. So $9.50 per hour. Problem number four. In 30 seconds, the object traveled 11 feet. How far can it go in one second? Remember what we said on problem number two? Whatever unit of measure has the one with it is like saying per second. So if I want to get per second, then I have to put the seconds in the denominator of my fraction. And that means the 11 feet would go in the numerator of my fraction, and that's the order I divided my calculator. 11 first, then divided by 30, not the other way around. If you do it the other way around, you're not going to get 0 point something. You're going to get like 2 point something. So make sure you're doing this in the correct order. All right, this is going to give you 0 0.3666666. It goes on forever. Your calculator might even round up at the end and have a 7. You can ignore that 7. We're not going to round here. 0 0.36, put the repeating bar. And now let's put the units of measure, feet per second. Oh, spoiler alert. I'm putting a diagonal slash instead of the word per. Go ahead and flip the page if you're done fixing your number four, because let's talk about some alternate ways of how you can write a unit rate. The ways we've talked about so far is using the word per, or sometimes we even say one hour for the second part. Well, I just showed you on the previous problem that you can have a diagonal slash that will take the place of the word per. So that's what that diagonal slash basically means. If you ever see this like in a sentence, if you're reading a paragraph in some you know news article or something, that is $9.50 per hour. The slash is a way of saying per. Now, I can also say $9.50 each hour. Sometimes you're going to see unit rates described with the word each instead of the word per. Sometimes you're going to see with the phrase for every. $9.50 for every hour. So these are some alternate ways of writing a unit rate. The most common way that you're going to see from most people in real life or things that you might read is the word per, or sometimes they use the diagonal slash to replace the word per. All right, now, what do you do when the problem does not actually tell you the order for the units of measure? Most problems will. But there's a few times it might not, so here's what I want to give you is some tips here. If the problem involves money, now there's two situations that are very common for money unit rate problems. When we're trying to find the price of something, that's called unit price. We talked about that on the first page. And we just did a problem number three where we're finding a pay rate. So again, that's money involved. And for unit price and for pay rates, it's always the money per something. So that means the money is going to be placed in the numerator. And I apologize for highlighting pay rate in a different color. I didn't really mean to do that. If money's involved, you're going to put that up on top in the numerator. And then you'll divide by whatever the other unit of measure happens to be. If a unit of time is involved. Now, your units of time could be days, hours, minutes, seconds. It could even be like weeks or months or years. Most unit rates that deal with time the time is going to be the second part. So it's going to go down in the denominator. Now, there are some exceptions to these rules. That's why I put little asterisks here. There could be a few times where money might go second. It's rare, but it can maybe happen. There might be a few situations where you put the unit of time first on the numerator, but it's rare. Okay. So general rule of thumb, if money is involved, put it up at the top. If a unit of time is involved, put that down in the bottom, in the denominator. All right, let's quickly talk about rounding. If you want to read it to yourself and then kind of skip ahead past me reading it, I have no, I'm not going to be offended by that. Normally, I don't want you to skip through things in the video, but if you want to read this to yourself, that's fine. It says, do not round unless the directions tell you to, or if it's dollars and cents. Remember, with dollars and cents, we always have two digits to the right of the decimal point. Sometimes the directions may say round to the nearest tenth, if necessary, around to the nearest hundredth, if necessary, around to the nearest thousandth, if necessary. The words, if necessary, are really interesting. When is it necessary? Well, if the answer in your calculator is a decimal in which you cannot tell where it repeats when you're looking at your calculator screen, 
Well, then that's when it's going to be necessary to round to whatever place value the directions tell you to round. But if it's a repeating decimal, then it's not really necessary to round. You can just put the repeating bar on whatever part is repeating. Sometimes it's one digit, sometimes it's two digits, sometimes, sometimes it's more than that. If it's a terminating decimal, you might remember that word from sixth grade math, terminating decimals are the ones that actually stop. Well, then there's no need to round at all, really. If the answer is dollars and cents, you're going to round to the nearest hundredth. We've talked about that before. That's what the nearest cent would be, two digits to the right of the decimal point. That's called the hundredths. Um, if you do need to round, I would like for you to get in the habit of using this interesting symbol. You're going to see it here on number five. In fact, let's go ahead, take a look at number five right now. It says for the following problems, round to the nearest tenth. If necessary, those directions are going to apply to five, six, and seven. Number five's already done for you. Let's take a look at this. 24 cans of soda cost $7.99. Find the unit price. Oh, unit price. We just got done talking about this up here in this chart. Unit price is an example with money. We're going to put that up in the top. And that's exactly what I did here. The money went up on top for the setup of my work. Then I divided by 24 cans. In my calculator, I got, actually in my calculator, I got this really ugly looking long decimal. Well, I can see that it repeats, but with money, you round to the nearest cent. So remember, nearest cent means the second digit after the decimal point. So I look here to the right of this 33 cents. Is the two big enough to round up the three? Well, no, it's not. That's why I said 33 cents per can. Um, yes, I still put a dollar symbol, even though you heard me say cents. You guys should know by now that when it's a decimal value with a dollar sign, then that's decimal part is called cents. Here's this wavy equal sign, and it's officially called approximately equal to. You're going to use that symbol anytime you round. Okay. I want you to try six and seven on your own. Um, hit pause on the video now. Try them on your own, and then hit play when you're ready to see how you did. All right. Have you already done six and seven on your own? If not, you better hit pause now. Number six. Here we go. Three pounds of beef cost $8 at the store. Find the unit price. Unit price. We just got done talking about this on number five. Money should go up on top. So did you put the $8 on top divided by, oh, three. That's actually a number. You guys know what it looks like. It looks like that. So I'm going to go ahead and that's my three pounds. Don't ask me why we decided to call pounds LB. It actually comes from a Latin word. I'm not going to bore you with those details right now in this video, but that is the abbreviation for pounds for whatever reason. We're going to divide on our calculator. Our calculator will give us this decimal. In fact, most calculators even put a seven at the end because they're rounding at the end. But we need a round to the nearest cent. There should be two digits to the right of the decimal point. So let's look to the right of the hundredths. Is six big enough to make the six and the hundredths round up? Why, well, yes, it is. So $2.67 per pound is our answer. And since we did round to the nearest cent, I used the approximately equal to symbol. Problem number seven, they traveled 171 miles on seven gallons of gasoline. Find the miles per gallon. This was a nice problem because kind of like numbers one, two, three, and four, it actually tells you the order for the unit of measure. Miles is first per gallon. So whatever's to the right of per, that's going to be your denominator like we talked about before. So make sure you set it up like this. Miles on top, gallons on bottom. That way you'll get miles per gallon. Dividing your calculator. This is a really ugly looking decimal. You might not have been able to tell where it repeats. Believe it or not, it's a six digit repeating decimal, but this is one where I'm totally cool with you rounding to the nearest tenth because it pretty much was necessary for most of you. You probably couldn't tell that it was a six digit repeating decimal. So rounding, this is going to be 24.4 because I'm rounding to the tenths. I know I just did hundredths on five and six, but that's because it was money. Money is dollars and cents. You always need two digits to the right of the decimal point with money. But number seven is not money. So I default to the directions around the nearest tenth. So I did. Tenths was the four. I looked to the right of it. 
Two was not big enough to make the four round up, so I kept the 24.4 miles per gallon. All right, I'm going to stop the video at this point, and the next part of the guided notes I will do in a separate video. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.